let's talk about our RAID 5, RAID 6 policies. In our RAID 1 video, we introduced a new acronym called FTM, our Failure Tolerance Methods. We've got mirroring and we've got erasure coding. Our RAID 5, RAID 6 policies fall underneath erasure coding. We're going to start off by talking about our RAID 5 policy first. For RAID 5, I'm currently picturing an elevator. We're going to start at the very top here and then do three layers of deep to talk about how RAID 5 works. So let's start off and talk about our top layer first. Let's say we've got $300. I happen to be in the US, so we use dollars, but you can use your own local currency if you want. And I want to put the $300 into a bank, but I'm not fully trusting of banks, so I want to spread that money out across a couple different banks. So I put $100 in this bank, $100 in this bank, and $100 in this bank. But then I need to track, where did I put all my money? So I create a ledger, and I put that in a fourth bank. I store that with our fourth bank. And then let's say one day a robber comes along and they steal the money from bank two. And the bank two, they're not a great job with their accounting. And so they come to me and say, we've lost some of your money. We just don't know how much money we have or how much money you lost. Can you prove that to us? And so luckily I've got my ledger in the fourth bank that I can go back and say, well, bank one should have this amount. Bank three should have this amount. My ledger says this. So that means that bank two is missing this amount of money. This is how much the robber took. And that's a little bit how RAID 5 works. So going down to our next layer, let's say we've got a 300 gig VMDK. And I take that 300 gig VMDK and I split it in thirds. I put some on host one, I put 100 gigs on host one, 100 gigs on host two, and 100 gigs on host three. And then on host four, I put our ledger. We call that parity. So that way, if I had lost any of the data from those other hosts, I could go to our ledger, our parity piece, and say, oh, this is the missing data because I've got host one, I've got host three, I know what that data looks like, plus the ledger, well, that missing piece of data is what I'm missing. And so I can say, this is exactly what I'm missing. Not only from a size perspective, like, oh, I lost 100 gigs, but what was that data inside of there? Let's say we throw a party. We're gonna throw a big cookout, we invite all the neighbors over, they invite some of their kids over, and we've got a bucket of candy sitting inside the house. One of the parents comes out with that bucket of candy and starts handing out to kids. We've got four kids. So our parent hands it out to the first kid, the second kid, and the third kid. They tell the fourth kid, I want you to remember who got candy. We then repeat that pattern where the first, second, and third kid get a piece of candy. We tell the fourth kid, I want you to remember who got a piece of candy. If we keep repeating that pattern, at some point, the kid, that fourth kid is gonna just walk away and say, you know what, I'm not getting any candy. That's not a lot of fun. I'm gonna go do something else with my friends. And so the way vSAN works is we practice a distributed parity system. So we take our data and we say host one, host two, host three, get a piece of data for that first stripe, that first round. And then for our fourth host, we say, well, who got data and what did you actually get in that data? And then because we, we practice distributed parity, I shift everything over. So for that second stripe of data, I tell host one, I want you to remember who got what for this stripe. We then move that parity over one more to where host two now has to remember what kids got candy or what kind of data we have for that stripe. And we keep practicing that throughout the process. We keep shifting the parity around. So all the hosts get to participate in parity. All the hosts have a little bit of parity. And so those block sizes are 1K in size. So we take that 300 gig VMDK and we start breaking it up into 1K chunks. And we start spreading that across each individual one. For our parity, that's gonna be also 1K in size. So that's when we say that we've got our 300 gig VMDK plus 1K for our parity for each individual stripe or 100 gigs in this example. So our RAID 5 policy would use 400 gigs total. And with that 400 gigs, we can tolerate a single failing environment. Because if I lost any of those pieces, well then I can tolerate it because I've got our ledger or I've got our three components, completely fine. But if I lost a second one, let's say I had a failure on host one and a failure on host two. From an availability perspective, that brings me down to exactly 50%. In our RAID 1 video, I was saying it has to be above 50%, and this is the reason why. Because if I lose two of our components, let's say it's the data that's on host 1 and host 2, well, now I'm exactly at 50%. Because I've got our third component, and I've got our parity piece, well, I can't figure out what was those other two missing components. With all that laid out, let's talk about RAID 6 next. With RAID 6, we can tolerate two failures in the environment. Our formula is going to be 2 to the nth plus 2. So two times two, which would be four, plus two. So that tells you we're gonna have six components overall while we're spreading that parity out across all of those. We'll have two pieces of parity and four pieces of data per each stripe. 
So in that case, we would have, on, let's say for our stripe one, we'd have data, 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 parity, parity. Then for our second stripe, we'll have parity, parity, data, 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 data. And we keep rinsing and repeating that process, all using those 1K for each one of those block sizes. So from a storage perspective, let's say we've got a 400 gig VMDK. We take that 400 gig VMDK, we chunk it into four pieces, and we start spreading it across all of our hosts. With our parity, we're taking 100 gigs for parity one, 100 gigs for parity two, for a total of 600 gigs. And that allows us to tolerate two failures because I can lose component one and component two and still be above that 50% watermark. Since we've been talking about sizes, let's compare our erasure coding policies to our mirroring policies. We'll start out with our RAID 5 FTT of one versus our RAID 1 FTT of one policy. Let's say we've got a 300 gig VMDK. With our RAID 5 policy, we've got that 300 gigs for data plus that 100 gigs for parity. Compared to our RAID 1 FTT of one policy, where we're mirroring the data in the environment. So one host has 300 gigs, the other host has 300 gigs for a total of 600 gigs. So 400 gigs with our RAID 5 policy versus 600 gigs with our RAID 1 policy for 33% space savings. And then for our RAID 6 policy, which is FTT of two versus RAID 1 FTT of two, let's say we've got our 400 gig VMDK. With our 400 gig VMDK, we've got 400 gigs for data plus 200 gigs for parity for a total of 600 gigs versus in our RAID 1 FTT of two policy, I've got 400 gigs, 400 gigs, and 400 gigs on a third host. We have three data components for a total of 1,200 gigs or 1 1.2 terabytes, but either way, it's a 50% space savings. You know, you're thinking, why don't we use RAID 5 and RAID 6 just all the time? We get this great space savings. Our ratio coding policies focuses on saving space in the environment, but trade-off is a little bit of performance. Compared to our mirroring policies, which is more performance-oriented, but trading off some of that space savings. So let's start off by talking about how a write works. If I want to write a piece of data, I'm writing those 1K block sizes and then calculating parity. I then shift parity over, calculate those, write those 1K block sizes, and calculate the parity, rinse and repeat that process. There's one extra step to that process. Compared to our RAID 1 policies, where I write the data to both locations, assuming it's FTT of 1, and that's it, I'm done. So you can see there's a little bit of an additional step that has to be taken. Now, from an update perspective, let's say I'm in a document and I'm making some changes to it and I click the save button. Well, now I need to update some existing blocks of data. So I'd read in those blocks of data, read in the parity, write the new blocks of data, write the new parity. So as you can see, there's some overhead perspective that comes along with it. So while erasure coding focuses on the space savings, it trades off with some of the performance. But to minimize some of that performance impact, we say it only works on an all flash configuration, whether it's SSDs or NVMEs, just to kind of minimize that as much as possible. That's one of the things I love about vSAN is we're not tied to a specific policy. We can customize it based on our needs. Let's say we've got a VM that's got an OS drive and it has an application drive. For that OS, we don't need that screaming fast performance. RAID 5 works perfectly fine. For our application drive though, let's say it's some kind of database. We want a little bit faster performance. So we can choose our RAID 1 mirroring policies. And again, that's, I already said it once, but that's what I love about vSAN is we're not tied to a specific policy. And in a future video, we'll walk through how can we customize those policies for each of our VMDKs, which I think at this point is a good place to wrap up. We start off by talking about our RAID 5 policy, how for each of our individual stripes, we've got three pieces of data and one piece of parity. And then we spread that parity across all of the hosts in the environment to make sure all of our kids get the candy or all of our hosts have a little bit of parity in the environment. We then switched gears and talked about our RAID 6 policy, how our RAID 6 policy supports two failures in the environment by having two pieces of parity and four pieces of data for each stripe. We then talk about from a storage perspective, how much storage each one of them uses compared to our mirroring policies, our RAID 1 policies. We then wrapped up by talking about the trade-offs between those two different types of policies. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.